If there is one tool that can change your productivity entirely, it's Google Calendar. And in this video, I will show you how to use it. All right, we're good to go. As with all Google products, you have to be logged into your Google account to assess them. And then you can either come right here and click on calendar, or you can also type calendar.google.com to assess the calendar options. Now, if this is your first time logging into Google calendar, you will be presented with this a little notification saying, welcome to your new Google calendar. And that they also got apps on Google play and on app store. So you can, of course, download the app and have your calendar on the go. Now uh, this is the main default view you will see with the red line marked where we currently stand. So this is the time and the date I'm recording this video. So let's go ahead and explore all the options you have here, all the features, and we are going to get started with the view. So currently we are on the week mode. So you can see our week starting from Sunday to the Saturday. And if you come here, you can change it to be displayed by day, by month. Uh, you can also select year. Now, if you click on the schedule, it will just give you all the events that are on your calendar. So this is an empty calendar. I haven't set any events right now. And basically the events that I'm seeing here coming from this calendar called holidays in United Kingdom. Okay, so this is just default calendar. Google is giving me based on my location. So I see all the public holidays during this year. So this is really your preference, how you want to set up. You can also select four days. So how you want to set up and show your preview once you're logging into Google Calendar. So I like to see it as a month. It just gives me more overview. And again, you'll see where you are today. And again, if you navigate somewhere out of the current day or time, let's say I'm somewhere in the November 2022. And then I want to get back today on the current month where I am. If you click on this today back, it will just cycle you back on the current day. And as I have set it up as a view of month, that will just show me the month where we are right now. If you use these arrows, it will navigate again based on the selection you have done here. So if I'm currently seeing a month view, if I click here, it will gonna show me next month and the previous month. So if I, let's say, set it up as a days, then you are able to navigate by a single day. And of course you can switch in between depending what are you doing. If you're planning the current week, maybe you want to see your week preview and then you can navigate it from here again. Now let's quickly look on this sidebar right here. So there are some shortcuts to Google Keep. Uh, Google Keep is a great way how you can actually keep up with your list, your plans, your ideas. If you would like me to do another tutorial about Google Keep, let me know in the comments. And then you can also have options here to assess your tasks, your contacts, and Google Maps. And if there is something you would like to add here, you can click on this icon right here and then add the icons and it will gonna load the apps you can use to improve your Google Calendar. So for example, if you're doing your meetings in the Zoom, you can add Zoom right here. And there are several other options you can add. And then if you want to select one and add it, it will again display right here on your shortcuts. Now, if you are not using any of these, you can always hide this panel by clicking on this arrow right there. Okay, now if you look on another side, you will see the calendars you are subscribed and you are not owner of these calendars. And as I said, by default, I can see public holidays in the United Kingdom as well here. And the great thing is that you can assign colors for these calendars. So if you come on this calendar and then click on this three dot icon right there, you can display only this calendar. You can assess settings. We're gonna look into settings in just a second. And then you can color a uh, label your calendars just to give you some more visual preview. Okay, so now let's go ahead and look on the main settings menu, not for the specific calendars, but for all your calendars all together. So if you click on the settings right here, you will see loads of sections you can set up. Now you can start with your language and your region. Now under the time zone, display secondary time zone. This is great if you are working with some uh, colleagues or business partners somewhere else in the world, you just want to know what time is in their country where they are. So when you set up the meetings, you will be sure not to set up meetings somewhere in the middle of the night, for example. So if you click on this, you can add more uh, secondary time zones from here. 
Again, you can enable world clock here if that's something that can be beneficial for you. And here there are some default settings for your event. So once you are creating an event, it will come by default based on the time you have set here. You can of course change it. Let's say I would like to keep it as 30 a minute. Now here you can set some default guest permission. So for example, guests are able to modify events. They invite more people and they can also see the guest list. So if you're working in a part of the project and you want everyone to give equal access, you can click here on modifies. So your guest of your event will be also able to modify this event. So again, this will really depend on the type of people you are working with. Okay, now the next section and notifications, I think is very important one, especially for me who tend to uh, forget about the things. So you can set up the alert you can off them, you can have desktop notifications and you can have a let. So I would like to leave it as a desktop notifications and then you can set up the time, let's say five minutes before event and it will gonna play the sound. Now, if you have some event that you have declined and you only want to receive notification when you have said yes or maybe to event, you can enable it right here. So you don't get these notifications about the events that you have declined in the past. Then again, you have some options to show weekends show the client event on your calendar. I don't really want to see a uh, declined events. It's just going to pack up my calendar. And I already know that I have declined those events anyway. So I don't want to display them. You can display week numbers. You can display short events, the same size as 30 minute events. Uh, you can reduce brightness of the past events. So you again can really like see visually the events that you already have uh, taken part and the ones that are in the future. Okay. So I like to uh, enable this and tick it on and then you can see view calendar side by side in a day's view and you can set when you want your week to start is it sunday saturday or monday you can do your custom view so from the preview tab we saw before you are able to set up like days views months years so here you can come and actually set up a very specific custom view for example you are working three days per week and this is your uh, work calendar you want to set it as a three days so you can come here and that just set it that custom view okay and then there are alternative calendars option right here as well if you want to see maybe a chinese traditional holidays as well you can come here and set up the this option right there now events from gmail you can show events automatically created by gmail in my calendar this is really useful if you are receiving some notifications maybe your dentist appointment to your gmail then the gmail can transfer it to your calendar and again it will be privacy email only for me let's say you of course don't want to show your dentist appointments to your colleagues but if you think that's something you want to put on calendar default uh, then you can just of course use this option right here now keyboard shortcut again is a really great option it just really saves the time if you know how to use the shortcut if you come on your keyboard and click on shift and the question mark it will then display you all the shortcuts you can use so as you can see if you click on one or d it will give you days view if you scroll down you can see all the uh, shortcuts you can use while you are in the calendar and i think that's a really a great view if you are someone like me and who loves using a shortcut if you don't want to use a shortcut if you like feel like you by mistake can press something that you don't want you can of course disable this option here and here you can set up your calendar offline if that's something you might need to. So to create a new calendar, you can come here under my calendars and then click on plus icon and you can create a new calendar from here. You can subscribe to some calendar if you know how to find it. You can browse calendars on internet. You can also use URL or just import it. If you click on import, then you can select file from your computer and import it right here. Now, a very important feature, how to create the event. You can come here on this icon right there, click on create event or if you just click once on the day you are able to add your event here as well now we're going to start with adding title okay so before we go and add new events on our calendar
calendar, let's just look on the settings for each and every specific calendars we have here. So if you click on this menu right here and then on settings and sharing, you can change your calendar settings from here. So you can of course give it a name and description, set up the time zone again, and then you will see who is the owner of this calendar. You can export it as well if you want it. You can make it available to public, get the shareable links and so on. Now again here you can set up notifications specifically for the each calendar and here you can get notifications when there are new events added to this calendar, change events. So change events I think is very important if you have planned some events on this calendar you can get notification on your email once event is changed, also if it gets cancelled, uh, if there are any other responses on this event on the calendar like this one, I would really wouldn't want to know about it, so I would choose none, and daily agendas. Now daily agendas are very helpful, and if you set up as an email, you will receive email in the morning about all the events on the calendar for the particular day, and that is really great, so you don't really have to look at the day before, or what is ahead, you can just wait on the morning. Uh, it comes at 5 o'clock in the morning, so you will receive this daily agenda and then you will be able to see all the events that you have uh, scheduled for that day. So that's a really great way how to get an uh, email about all your events scheduled for that particular day. Okay, and then there are some other options how you can customize and integrate your calendars and you can also delete your calendar from here. Now let's head back and go ahead actually adding event. To add event, you can click on this plus icon right here and add event or task. Also if you just click on the day and time cell right here it will give you option to adding event. We're gonna add a title, we're gonna call it let's say morning meeting And then you will see there is a time and a date for this event. It does not repeat if you click on it. So you have options how you want to repeat this. Let's say every weekday, Monday to Friday, you will start, your team will start with the morning meeting. So you can set it up like that and then find a time again. And you can just put the slot of the time right here and click on save. You can also integrate Google Meet here. Then if you would like me to do another tutorial about Google Meet, let me know in the comments as well and then click on save. Okay, so you can see this meeting now is on four days right here. Again, if you click on it, you can actually come here and edit it again. So from here, you can add the notifications and you can also invite people by adding their email addresses right here. So if you select the email address, you can then just save and this email address user will be notified and again from here you can also set up the permissions as we saw on settings so if you would like these users to modify the event you can enable it here right there and then just click save and again here you can edit recording event if you want this event to and following event uh, become a recording you can just select this and then click on ok and then would you like to send an invitation to email to google calendar guest okay so you can go back to editing you don't want to send it yet or you can just send it right now so you have these options okay so you have saved your event and all your guests have been notified if you click on your event and then come to this selection options right here you can print it out you can duplicate it if you are creating very similar events Event. you can publish which generally means you're getting the links you can share and then you can also uh, publish this instance of the event again that's the same thing really you're getting html codes or link to your events you can share and then you also can change the owner let's say you have set up event and you no longer want to be in charge of it you can assign another owner of this event so let's say we have invited this person and now this person will become the owner of this event and you can also so send them specified a message saying that you would like to transfer ownership of this event to this particular user. And by clicking here, you can change the owner. And since you are taking part on this meeting, you can still edit it even if you are not owner because we uh, enable the option for guests to modify the meeting. So that's why you can still come here and modify your event. If this option would be unticked, that means you would not be able to longer edit your event since you are not owner. And lastly, if you watch this video and maybe some other videos on YouTube and still struggling with Google calendars, you can come here on 
this support icon right there and get some extra help, training, you can read about the latest updates and you can also send feedback to Google, including a screenshot if you just would like to let Google know something that you have on your mind about the product of Google Calendar. And if there is anything else you would like me to explore and show you as a tutorial, feel free to let me know in the comment. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, click that like button. If you want to see more videos like this, click subscribe if you haven't done it yet. And if you click the notification bell, you will be notified whenever we upload new videos and we do so every single week. Now go ahead and watch this video as the next one and I will see you there.